Hey friends, uh, welcome to Small Groups. This week at the Foundry, we talked about the compassion of Christ, the compassion that Jesus had for those people who were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And I love the idea of the church as a compassionate agency for Christ, that we are compassionate, not on our terms, but on God's terms, compassionate to see them for what they are in God's eyes, people that he wants to gather to himself, people that God dearly loves. I love what Jesus said to his disciples. He didn't tell them to run out and do something. He said, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send workers. And what that means to me is that when we pray that God will send workers, it means that I think more than likely, based on the disciples' experience, when they prayed for workers, they became the workers. God instilled his heart and compassion into them so that they could live into the mission of the church faithfully in their generation. And our generation knows the exact same calling. We are all called to go. The go of Jesus Christ, the thing that says go into all the world, preach the gospel, is universal. There is no Christian who isn't called to go and be faithful. Whether you go locally and work within your homes, your schools, your extended families, your, your workplaces, you go and you share the gospel boldly and fearlessly because you are called by Christ. You are commanded by Christ to go and teach the world, tell the world about Jesus. Some of you are called to go globally and that's amazing and awesome in its own way, but it's no different. They're all people that God wants them to know him. He knows them but he's given us his spirit and the compassion and the call to prayer will cultivate within us a life that is on the go, that is in mission for Jesus Christ, purposeful beyond our circumstances. And it gives us the opportunity to be faithful to Christ in the daily life we live, giving witness to him. So my challenge to you is the same. Will you be groups and individuals dedicated to praying that the Lord will raise up people um, the Lord of the harvest will raise up people to go out into that world and reach those who don't know him. Yeah, we got a little bit of a space crunch here at the foundry. We'll figure it out because we believe that God loves them more than we love our, you know, our free space and stuff in here. We would rather have to figure out what to do to get everybody in because they've been gathered to God. So let's do this. Let's be people who understand. Go isn't optional. It's the high calling of the believer. And you've been invited to participate with God's mission on his terms. Go therefore into all the world. Make disciples of all nations and teach them all I have taught you. And go and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, I will be with you to the very end of the age. We're not at this alone. We're not good moral people. We're faithful Christians courageously obeying the call to go. So question number one, Jesus had compassion on those crowds in Matthew chapter nine. Um, do me a favor, explain to your group, describe a time where you recently had compassion on someone. Question number two, what is the last situation person or something you prayed about that was outside of you or your family? When's the last prayer you prayed that influenced beyond you? Question three says it this way. In the devotions last week, we explained that the original text in the scripture describes people not just harassed, but the word actually means mangled, skinned alive, kind of pulled apart at the seams. This is such strong language. And I wonder, have you seen people who look like they are just harassed and desperate the way you'd be if you were being pulled apart? If you think about it, do you know people or have you seen people who are harassed and desperate like that? Have you realized that you are redeemed in Christ, that you are equipped and gifted by the Holy Spirit to go out and live a life as a worker among the people who don't know Jesus? Have you ever thought of that? Have you realized what your redemption and your giftedness is for? And if you haven't, what is your reaction to this news? I know for a fact that Erica and I have had conversations about times where we felt a prompting by the Holy Spirit and we didn't obey. 
Have you ever had that? Have you ever experienced that prompting and then a moment where you're like, no, and you disobeyed? Do you believe that the Great Commission is for all Christians? Talk about that and then read Matthew 28, uh, 16 to 20 as a group. All right, friends, I hope you've had a great small group time. Hopefully there's some outtakes at the end of this because let's be honest, I got a one-way pass on the struggle bus today. I didn't do good with my questions. I got corrected many times, but that doesn't matter. I hope you have a great week, and I hope you feel the, the compelling call of Jesus Christ to go and be faithful. Go do that in your everyday, ordinary lives and see what amazing things God does to expand the kingdom through the life you live. Grace and peace. This week at the Foundry, I just spit. You see that? Let, let, you can keep that in there, because why not? All right, this week at the Foundry, we... we I'm going to get this right. All right, friends. Well, I hope you've had a great small group time. Um, it's, I don't even know what I'm saying. Among those, I'm going to get this right. I re-redo question six, where I'm just going to read the question. You're <laughs> the worst. They're like over there mocking me with your eyes. All right, triple redo, question six. Do you believe the Great Commission is for all quite... Oh. Oh. Do you believe the Great Commission is for all... God, I cannot... <laughs> oh, this is the worst! I can't... I, I'm like, questions? Marriage? Love? All right.